My name is George Florio. I grew up in New Orleans. I sort of was maybe a, a creature of that culture. Uh, in, in, in a sense, you, you, you look at history and you look at artifacts and you look at a, a notion of, of what is valuable in terms of your environment. And so I think that framed my vision of life. But it is a place of extremes, like uh, religion like ver versus debauchery, you know, the, uh, the Mardi Gras and all that stuff. Uh, so from that experience, I just grew up yearning to make because I saw it all around us. And my family was rather small, but it, the extended family was, was quite large and went back into the Cajun culture. And, uh, but I didn't stay there. I moved away, uh, went to uh, college in Florida, went to even graduate school there, and then started getting residency grants and finally finished up with a master's and then went to the meat yard of getting an academic degree going into academia as teaching. And that lasted 33 years through four colleges. And I gave up on that for a while now, uh, happily, not that I was fired, uh, but I figured, you know, I'm old enough, it's time to do some work for me. And so that's what I've been doing now. I'm obsessed with trees because it's an ecological sort of uh, engine. It produces, it doesn't take away. And that's what's so marvelous about trees. And they're prolific and they are abundant, except that we're chopping them down really quickly. And that's what this show is about. The fact that we are chopping down trees indiscriminately and we're not realizing how valuable they are. They produce oxygen. They retain soil. They are carbon capture machines. And they can do so much to slow down environmental change, which is something we have to deal with as a culture. And I hope we can. Given what we went through with COVID, an environmental crisis could be disastrous. So I think we have to start thinking about how we can avoid that issue again. I am very excited about this show. Uh, the pieces are sort of stumps. They're fragments of trees, but fragments that I made, that I fabricated. So nothing is found beyond the surface. So I literally make an armature and attach these found pieces of bark or twigs to that constructed frame. I get all my wood from an area in the Maryland mountains, the Catoctin Mountains. My son-in-law has a, a, an event center of 220 acres right next door to Camp David. He says, you can have anything, which is a great invitation. I don't chop trees down. So if they've fell, fallen, fine, I can use them. And uh, so I gather my raw materials up there, bring them to my studio and start figuring out what they say to me. And so I, I do start off with an image, uh, whether it's a branch, whether it's a trunk, whether it's something that's almost metaphorical, but not quite, and then I see where it goes. And some pieces take months. Um, an incredibly involved, laborious process of cutting twigs and gluing them to the form. Uh, but for some reason, it's gratifying. It's obsessive, but it's maybe I am an obsessive personality, so it's very relaxing to, to, innovate, to be able to uh, use those sort of uh, problems that some people have. Uh, to me, it's a, it's a strength. Uh, I want people to realize that they have a stake in this. They, it's their culture, too. It's their environment as well. Trees help them. Trees give them the air you breathe. They also filter the water. Take away the notion that you can restore forests even if it's, you're living in the urban environment. The urban canopy, which we have here, in, in DuPont Circle is quite beautiful, these gorgeous trees as you walk from the, the, the subway here, uh, but 
even in various other parts of the city in the, in the District of Columbia. It's wonderfully tree-lined. Those things cool the environment. They actually take in carbon. They are a gift to you. Take care of them. What am I going to do? I'm going to still keep on going up to the Katukta Mountains. I'm still going to keep on walking through the district, enjoying the trees, coming to the to, to, to Phillips Collection and coming here, and, and looking at the various portions of, of the landscape, whether it be urban or whether it be rural, and realizing that I have a stake in making sure that it stays alive. And I'm going to keep on making art that reflects that notion of keeping the environment alive. The landscape is all around us. We don't want it to die.